This is a very exciting time at the International School KPIS. I, I'm in my fourth year at the school. I retired from ISB. I was at ISB for 27 years teaching industrial design, a jewelry elective which was fabulous, and also teaching woodworking. I just loved teaching at that school and I'm having a, another lifetime at KPIS. The KPIS is going to start an initiative in design development and uh, manufacturing with children all the way from kindergarten up to high school and this is well I'm in my glory I want to help with it. I use this program at uh, ISB 18 years ago it was put free on the internet for a download by Google and I use this program for absolutely everything for pre-visualizing if I get an idea that there's a support column in a room and I want to build a cabinet around the support cabinet to house power tools this is the actual drawing that I did in probably about 40 minutes to, sh to so I could show the administration of the school how this thing should be constructed I use the program for describing and pre-visualizing everything. In fact, when I came to KPIS and they gave me a classroom, I planned how I was going to lay my the, the, the workbenches that I built, how I was going to lay them out in this classroom. I used it also to build the house. It, uh, I was able to uh, describe the way I wanted my kitchen to my Thai contractor and where I was going to put the building cabinets that I built. Uh, my living room walls, I even uh, described to the mason how I wanted cavities in the walls that were lit up with LED lights and possibly a uh, waterfall on the right side of the stairs. My jewelry shop in the house, everything I laid out with this free program. I love it. It has a learning curve that's just a half an hour to an hour and there's only 26 tools. This is my actual bathroom for my house. When I built the counters, I made a plan in SketchUp for the stone guy to put in uh, the stone surface on top of the counters absolutely everything I design I use this program and I've teach I've taught eighth graders and seventh graders to use the program when they design like an LED lamp in my classes I made uh, models with it and right now my students are going to build a sound system and I had them copy some sound system designs that I made up in a few minutes so they could learn the tools in the program and get proficient with it I ran a project at ISB, uh, now it's really 17 or 18 years ago at ISB, I, I ran a pro project where the kids all built sound systems and these were sound systems to rival um, JBL and Bose and Altec Lansing and I called it the iPod sound system. This is when every kid in a school uh, went out and bought himself an iPod or a Chinese knockoff of an iPod. And everybody had earphones on. And uh, of course, m most, uh, I, I was kind of discouraged because I thought the kids were isolating themselves wearing earphones in school. So uh, they always asked me, could I wear my iPhones well, or my iPod and earphones while I work? But anyhow, I saw what was in the making and everybody was listening to their music. Um, when the iPod came out, this was a, a, uh, a colossal market for Apple. And uh, I thought, well, let, why not let those kids build sound systems and design them in my class? I taught them electronics and uh, stuff. That I was just amazed. We had a phenomena in Bangkok. I think it was about the ninth or eighth wonder of the world, and it was called Pontip Plaza. You could go there and buy Chinese uh, MP3 players. This was a, a, at a time when these were just becoming super popular. You, every kid had to have one. 
And many parents actually called me up and asked me, could I suggest the best MP3 player for their for their kid? They wanted to buy them a, um, a birthday gift. Um, I took the kids in my classes to Bon Mall, and I showed them factory overruns of uh, these Chinese amplifiers that were selling for absolutely a song. We're talking up 200 baht. I brought one of these amps home and tested it and put in used Chinese speakers and they just blew me away. So this was the beginning of a project for my kids and I would teach them to use SketchUp to design the sound system. And now I'm doing the same thing at KPIS. Uh, I'm starting this project again for their first project in design woodworking and they are all having a ball right now. Uh, they are going to spend a thousand baht and buy all the components and build a sound system that rivals anything you can buy from the commercial manufacturers. So it's really cool and they can include a DVD player and I found out that in my class they were learning more about electricity and more about what stereo is and how to make baffles for speakers and the science of sound than they ever learned in science. And I was just, I was amazed. They didn't even know what stereo was. And some of their cabinets were enormous. I had no limit on size. They could build their system any way they wanted. And I did, uh, I did uh, all their shopping for them. So if they wanted to include a DVD player in their cabinets, they could. I bought 9mm one side finished in teak uh, wood. But some kids used their own wood and built tables, uh, sound tables, and all kinds of uh, amazing pieces of furniture with speaker systems built into it. Now I ran this project all the way from 7th grade all the way up to 12th and I very carefully documented actually every project I did at ISB I documented so I've got tons of slides and loads and loads of movies of these kids working. The industry in my classroom, well, it attracted everybody. Guests who came into the school saw what these children are doing, and they were literally blown away, you know. Uh, the kid had to learn how to lay out on his uh, piece of wood. He had to order the wood, and uh, the school would furnish the wood, and they would pay a fee for the electronic parts that they wanted and I would do all the shopping for each kid which drove me bananas night after night I was coming home at nine o'clock at night with 50 speakers and some kids it wasn't enough to put a speaker in a cabinet they wanted a three-way system so I had to show them how a crossover network works and uh, they learned about uh, putting in a power supplies Every student learned how to make connections and solder. They learned how to choose the appropriate size wire. The, the skills that they learned doing this project just blew, blew you away. And I was so, so proud of this class, uh, of all my classes. I ran this from the 7th grade all the way up to 12th grade. Kids learned how to use small machines, or routers and grinders, and all these different machines. Uh, 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 all together with hand tools, about 115 different hand and machine tools. And uh, now these kids are probably uh, nearly 35 years old or more, and I'll bet you they will never forget what they manufactured in my classroom. It was really amazing. And of course, uh, the dust in this classroom, <laughs> if it doesn't have some ramification, uh, it was really difficult because my classroom was getting smaller as we expanded and put more and more power tools in the classroom. The drawing was very important to this. We started out teaching them how to hand draw in two-point perspective so that they got uh, drawings that look 3D and we taught them the nuances of shading and controlling values with a pencil and it, it was like such an eye-opener all the skills that were happening from this and the drawings looked just totally professional so when a kid made and this kid this student is designing a cell phone 
um, and this student is designing a lamp, but the drawings, the side views and elevations were wonderful. So it, it, it's pro, this project just stands out in my mind, and I thought it would be really great to run this project again at KPIS. And I've shown the students that I'm teaching now, just today, these movies of these kids working, and of course they're all fired up now, and they, they really have a taste of what the project is going to turn into. We're moving into this new maker's space room that um, that KPS is, has now, and uh, uh, we're going to start, and I'm going to start with teaching the safety uh, connected to using all these hand tools and machines. Look at these cabinets that these kids, these kids uh, never did a day of wor woodworking and in their life. A brilliant young guy in my class, and he is routing right now with a router. He's taking off a dimension in his work. Could I stop you just? Can I stop you just for a second? Could you show how the speaker falls into that hole? Just take that away and hold the speaker slowly when you put it in. I want to just show what he's doing. He's he's surfacing the wood so the speaker drops right into that impression and flushes off and flushes off with the front. So the speaker is even with the wood in the front. So that's what this tool is. This is called a router. It's a very, very helpful tool for doing something like this. It's also used for trimming. Uh, it's probably one of, I never thought this tool was so important when I was young, and then I realized, man, that's why everything looks so professional. Look at Peter's design, see it? It's on a stand like that. And this is where his speakers go in there. There's gonna be speakers in here. And it's great design, and he's gonna cover it with this vinyl material, which looks like wood. It's got, a, it's got a wood imprint on it. And it's got to be done in a very clean environment. So he's going to take this into the other room. And you're going to go right over there, Peter. I'll meet you over there. Okay? And look at this man. He's having success. Necessary to go deeper. Deeper. Deeper? Yeah, a little okay. deeper. Now, do I need to go deeper all the way around or just to the parts where... Where it's standing up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. All right, this man is my, I call him my Einstein. He's an intellectual, but when it comes to practical work, this is, this is why this course is so necessary for him, you know. And we call this man KC. He's working on his amplifier. You see his amplifier? And, it, and look at his beautiful design that he did. He did this amazing design on a computer. And those are the speakers up on top. And this could be a real factory product in a real company. And right now he's wiring the rectifier to the transformer to his uh, amplifier. And he's got a little fan that's going to go inside and cool this thing. And it's all going to go into that cavity right there. All of this is going to go in. And uh, Casey's been working on it. How long have you been working on this, Casey? Um, about one month. About one month. Yeah. Is it hard? No. no. It's okay. Do you like the project? What do you think yeah, of the project? It's okay. Is it practical, a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to come up with something that's really unique. And look at the, and the work in this is so beautiful. And this is the back for it. This is the back that will go on and close this in. All right. The knobs from the amplifier, the amplifier will be installed this way. And it'll come up through the top, so the knobs will be, to control it, will be up here on the top. Really amazing project. This is his amplifier, and instead of using uh, a jack in the front, you can see this is a little jack, like an RCA jack. He doesn't need this jack anymore. And he's going to solder directly to the board, to these contacts. Uh, they're marked right and left and ground. And so we'll solder right on here. So you got to get the wire, and and you got to um, cut the wire. Okay? So cut the wire now, and I'll come back. This is Garrett. He's my all-time favorite guy. He works very independently, and he's it's so labor-intensive. Uh, somehow he wired this whole thing. It didn't work. And now he's rewiring it, and he's testing as he goes along. Right, can you test as you go along? Because I have a battery for you. You can test it. You know, and as he rewires it, now let me tell you what his idea is. He's building a cube, and there's going to be a line. Every you notice the two ends of the cube don't meet, 
And that's true to all sides of the cube. There's a split. See that split in there? And basically what happens in this is that there's, there's going to be blue light, which you can see lit up now. Those are blue, uh, super bright blue LEDs. And it's going to give him a blue line on each corner of the cube. And this is his idea. And it's difficult because he has a, uh, a row of LEDs going in each split here. There's a, a row of LEDs. The, these uh, LEDs are, are bought in Thailand in the surplus area, the electronic surplus area. And he's putting them in. And what he's doing is he's, he's wiring from strip to strip. And believe me, this is labor intensive. And he had to do the whole damn job over again, which was not easy to do. The thing I love about this man is that even when he comes into a problem and, and the tough uh, things get tough, the tough get going, this guy just goes right back in there and redoes the job. And I'll tell you, some kids would just quit when they found out it didn't work after they wired it. So uh, this is true to life in industry when you have problems. And sometimes you have to go and dig the whole thing out again and do, redo it. So, you know, I, when I see somebody that's willing to do all the labor like that. This is a little electronics area in my classroom. I'm going to back off so you can see what it looks like. And look at this girl. Remember I told you about her earlier? She's sanding the shape that she made with sandpaper. And she turned that all by herself out of a square block of wood. That is huge. Look at how big that is. It's probably the biggest thing that's ever been made in my class on a lathe. This actually is the biggest thing that's ever been made on a lathe in my classroom. Quite amazing. And that's in 17, 18 years in this classroom. No one's ever turned anything this big. Isn't that amazing? This girl is amazing. I have so much respect for her. And here's another guy I truly love. He's polite, he's a really wonderful man. I spoke to his parents not too long ago. Can I show you the shape of the thing you're making? Because I'm so proud of that thing that you designed. Remember that design I showed you earlier? He designed this himself on a computer. And uh, he's in the process of putting Formica on this. So he's going to cover this cabinet with Formica. You can easily see where the speakers are going to go. It's going to be a speaker here and a speaker here. And then the controls are on the front, is that right? Are the controls in the front? Yeah. So he's putting the controls in the front. Preset, did you have my class the first term? No, this is just the first time. Yeah. Have you ever done any work like this before in your life? Never. So this is a valuable experience. And you can see the Formica here. He's going to glue that on. Pretty hard to believe that this movie uh, is about 18 to 19 years ago at the International School of Bangkok. I had a wonderful course there and I think um, the fact that I had such a great course going, it, it kept me at the school in, in an exception of uh, eight years past the retirement age of 65 and I was really excited and I thought I'd make these movies for later on maybe uh, c coming up with a book for teachers who teach uh, technology. So, uh, all my projects I thought were super cool and I was really very proud of them and they had the kids uh, completely hypnotized with the project and many went home and told their mother and father this is the best thing I'm doing at school. And now I'm at KPIS and we have this design initiative and we're about to open this room. And the kids in this class are using the same program from probably more than 25 years ago. It's still useful, it's still viable, and it still has an accelerated, exceptional learning curve. And it, even though it's not touted like the rest of the new 3D programs, it's easy to learn and kids get up and it's useful and um, I showed them examples of how I planned my house uh, section by section for the masons and contractors to translate what I actually wanted and customize my home. And now they're onto it and I, I'm 
certain their parents are going to see it and get excited about it. And they're planning their sound systems. Right now they're modeling and they're using the 26 tools. I'm going to spend a lot of time teaching them hand tools and how to sharpen blades. And uh, I'm going to do what most uh, design programs miss. I'm going to give them a real woodworking experience and a lot about electronics. So all this combined in this first project for them. I'm really excited and they're excited too.